need to find a common space as trans activists, as trans organizations to come together and to speak commonly about what is the common advocacy objectives. Organizations need to reflect on which areas of work you would like to participate in around the ICD process. ACD is International Classification of Diseases and it's a very long and complex list uh, of diseases, of disorders, of injuries that is compiled and produced by the World Health Organization. It's used as a diagnostic tool, which means that if you go to see a doctor here or in South Africa or you go to see a doctor in Argentina, they are going to use the same diagnostic language. So if you get a diagnostic here and you are traveling and you want to communicate the kind of diagnosis that you have, all doctors around the world speak the same diagnostic language. If you have the right diagnosis, then your possibilities of having a better access to treatment will improve as well. In the case of trans people and, and for them to have access uh, to the legal recognition of their gender identities in different countries, uh, a, a diagnosis is re required and so it's the same requirement for everyone and that requirement is a code in ICD or DCM which is a, a different classification focused only on mental health and is used by insurance companies. So. Um, when you need to have a procedure, for example, you have provider have to use an ICD code for that procedure to be um, approved. This is a process affecting us all and all trans people from er everywhere and um, without mattering their opinion had the same right to um, make their, their own needs and perspectives uh, count. The question that we keep asking to WHO is, okay, but where is uh, trans knowledge in this process? Where are our experiences? Where are our, our voices? Globally, at the international level, I don't think there's been a strong African voice or any consultation and I think that's why a lot of us are feeling very removed from the conversation because these are the last stages of that conversation. But when he started, people are not even familiar with the terms or the language of what you're talking about. Interaction from Africa with the revision process has been very sporadic and not very organized. So we wanted to look at how to begin to change that. And we thought that one of the first things that we needed to do was to increase the knowledge of African activists around issues in the international classification of diseases. It's a bit of a joke. I am an intersex trans person. I'm gay too. I'm a sadomasochist. So I am in different places of the ICD. We were very happy to have Mario here, who's a great trans and intersex activist and he's very active in advocacy around ICD, the ICD revision process. The World Organization has a classification that is very, you know, outdated. They are reviewing it. They are trying to have a new version. In that process, that they are changing a lot of different chapters, including the chapter on mental health, where our categories are. In ICD-10, trans-related diagnoses are under the chapter on mental health. And we have there different kind of diagnoses. Some of them are like transsexualism or gender identity disorder in, in, uh, of childhood. Uh, but we also have fetishistic travestism, for example. And we have other uh, codes like uh, uh, sexual maturation disorder or uh, sexual relationship disorder. And all of them have gender identity as an indicator of, of a, mental, a mental disorder. The general issue with the way it is now is uh, gender identity means that it is classified under mental illnesses, you know, it's like diagnosed as a, <coughs> as a disorder, which makes me feel as a trans person that there's something wrong with me, like in, I'm not a person that is 100% ab abnormal, you know, I don't belong, I am the odd one out, you know, and generally I don't, I don't feel like I'm odd, I don't feel like I'm abnormal, I don't feel like I'm sick, 
you know, it's just that my physical biology doesn't reflect my, my inner self, you know. That is the only thing that I see. And I think it, for me, being classified as an ill person for who I am and to express myself as who I am, it is, it is, it is not within my right side of mind. It is disheartening and it is painful to think about it as well. The World Health Organization convened a working group of experts that studied the, the entire chapter <coughs> and prepared a proposal. So what the working group of WHO did was to analyze this diagnosis and they come up with a series of recommendations. If we open ICD-11, it's the beta draft, so it's not approved. It's not the first draft, but it's a draft as it, as it is right now. What WHO is, is proposing is to create a new chapter, a chapter called Conditions Related to Sexual Health, and to place there a new category called Gender Incongruence. Actually, uh, translated into two new categories, one is Gender Incongruence in Adolescence and Adulthood, and the other is gender incongruence of childhood. The positives is that they want to move it into a new um, chapter out of mental health. Now that is enormous and you know I totally support that because I think it's wonderful that uh, a group of people are no longer seen as um, mentally unwell. I have many issues really, mostly with the language that it uses, um, but also with the fact that if we are going to talk about gender identity not as a mental illness, if we are going to even depathologize it, then how do we do that within a document that is about diseases? <laughs> so I'm just conflicted, like why does it even have to be there? I understand the fact that it does create opportunities for transgender and intersex persons to access healthcare, but at the same time there is a big statement on what it is. You can't say that it's not a disease if it's in a document that is about diseases. I don't think language is that innocent, really. A question that we receive all the time is why not, you know, just taking out all re trans-related categories from ICD? And, you know, the main answer for that is because many people in the world w w will lose access to healthcare. And we believe that people should have access to healthcare based on human rights. So that this is like insurance, health insurance is not a good argument, but it's a reality. It's a mistake to believe that changing from gender identity disorder to this category is going to um, make, is going to leave trans people unprotected from access to healthcare. If we get rid of all codes, it will be basically, as the world is right now, that only rich people will be able to get access to those medical procedures. So it's a very tra tragic uh, choice. It's a choice that is not only inspired by depatrogization as a framework, but also social and economic justice as a framework. The teenagers and the adults need access to hormones and to surgery, some of them, not all of them, uh, to bring their bodies in line with um, their gender identity. Now that does mean uh, access to health practitioners for quite big issues and most but not all people feel that on the basis of that including by the way many transgender people that it's okay to have an adult diagnosis and a, and a, and a teen diagnosis because they definitely need their access to hormones the main problem is the the, the proposed introduction of the of the category of gender incongruence of childhood because in childhood, you don't have acts, you don't have treatment. The only thing that trans and gender variant children is like love and support and information, counseling, uh, but not access to treatment. So you don't need the category there. In my understanding and experience, all the transgender organizations throughout the world have been completely against this diagnosis for children. Having a category like gender in Congress of childhood is it's very pathologizing, it's pathologizing gender diversity in childhood. It's not only going to affect trans and gender variant children, but all those children that could be straight or, or adults or gay and lesbians or who behave, you know, express their gender 
in different ways that seems to be incongruent with, with the sex that was assigned to them at birth. So in that sense, it's a very uh, dangerous category. The idea is, you know, what in, in this case, what African activists have to say about the way in which they live, their legal reality and medical uh, reality in their own countries, and what's the message that they want to, to take to WHO. We need to develop over the next few months our own mapping out up to 2018. We need an Africa, is that the thing to say, the Africa roadmap to ICD? That's what we need. Um, we need a roadmap to, to, to what our, our plan of action is going to be. We, uh, expect the process to be finished by 2018, so there is still a time to um, uh, to produce knowledge and to provide a political a political input. Iranti continues to be committed to building a strong movement in the run up to 2018, which is the release date for ICD-11, and we're currently setting up um, sub-regional working groups on ICD research and documentation, and we want to make sure that. African voices are heard um, in the revision process, globally, uh, in global advocacy as well as by the WHO.